Okay, uh, my name is uh, Stephen Barstow. Uh, welcome to my garden here in just outside of uh, Trondheim, uh, in the little village of Malvik, here at uh, 63 and a half degrees north. And uh, we're right in the middle of the uh, the best season for uh, for harvesting in my garden because it's mainly perennial vegetables that I that I grow here. Um, the garden has maybe something like uh, 2,000 different uh, perennial vegetables and uh, today we're going to wander around the garden and collect uh, um, as many possible uh, vegetables for a, a multi-species salad which we're going to make a bit later today. Um, and where I'm standing just now is uh, in the middle of uh, um, what a lot of people recognise as a, a forest garden. Um, a garden with uh, predominantly edible plants and uh, with different layers. Um, right down on the, on the ground layer here we see a plant which is called um, in English Lesser Celandine. Um, it, uh, it starts uh, growing even up here in, uh, in the near Arctic very early in the springtime. So this year we had a very mild winter and this started, uh, I could start harvesting the leaves of this already in January. Um, above this we have uh, ostrich fern which is uh, actually come, come too far for, for harvesting um, and uh, it's uh, Norway's biggest uh, um, or tallest uh, um, fern um, and you use the young fiddleheads uh, as food in the springtime. Um, it tolerates, it's, it's a nice uh, uh, plant to have in a forest garden, it, it loves to have uh, uh, shady conditions. We see another plant here which originally completely covered the garden here. This is, uh, this is um, ground elder um, and there is huge amounts of it in the garden but it's uh, actually one of the most uh, tasty and uh, healthy plants um, that you could uh, wish for. So we're going to harvest a bit of that for the, the salad here. Um, the uh, lesser celandines come too far. We have another plant here which is uh, is also kind of semi-wild in the garden. Um, this is a giant bellflower, Campanula latifolia. Um, it has delicious, uh, slightly sweet tasting uh, spring leaves. Um, so that's a very good plant to have a ba as a basis of a, a spring salad. Um, there are also numerous uh, dandelions in the garden here. This is one, just a, a, wild, a wild dandelion. We'll see various others as we Wander, wander around the garden. So we can take those. Um, this plant here, you may be wondering what this is. This is actually my, my largest vegetable. It's called Udo. It comes from Japan and uh, it can reach uh, by the middle of June. This plant's going to be about uh, three to four meters tall. Um, and uh, it's actually at uh, almost the perfect time for harvesting. Normally, I would uh, I would blanch it. In other words, I would put a, a bucket over the plant in the uh, very early spring, and then the young shoots would come up uh, uh, in the total darkness and would be um, milder tasting. The green udo, in, it comes from Japan, and in Japan they uh, they use both the green udo, um, often in tempura. Um, and uh, the white udo is used in, in, in salads and uh, various other dishes. So I think we'll just take a little bit uh, today for a salad. It's quite strong, but it's very good in, in mixed salads. Okay, so this is uh, the udo. Um, okay, um, otherwise we have, um, behind me here, we have, uh, this is an old, uh, um, blackcurrant bush which is actually looking rather rather flattened because every autumn the udo falls on top of it um, and the weight of it crushes the plant unfortunately but it's still alive and we can still harvest the black currants but uh, the young shoots are also very good in uh, in, in these uh, spring mixed salads this is uh, there are actually two different rhubarbs growing together here this is a a wild or semi-wild uh, rhubarb, Rayum palmatum, and uh, next to it is a is a cultivar, one of the modern-day rhubarbs. And uh, 
Yeah, you don't have to have masses of sugar on rhubarb, you can use it as a vegetable as well. So I often have uh, the, um, the leaf stalks of rhubarb in these uh, mixed salads, and you can also use the palmatum. It's like your sour taste. Um, these uh, mixed salads, they often have a, a mixture of different, uh, different tastes. You've got mild plants, you've got uh, bitter plants, you have sour, you have sweet. And, and all mixed together, every mouthful will be, will be slightly different, which is so exciting. Right, pass these over. Um, down here we have uh, uh, an ornamental uh, version of uh, ground elder with these uh, variegated leaves. You can see, it's sometimes uh, planted in woodland gardens. It uh, tolerates almost complete shade, um, uh, and you can use the, the uh, particularly the young shoots. Nettle you can actually even eat nettle in, in salads, but you have to have to crush crush the leaves properly um, just to destroy the, the stinging hairs. And once you've crushed them, you can then just pop it in the mouth. Very tasty, nutritious. Here we have um, cow parsley, which is. Uh, um, you've got to be a bit careful with because it can be confused with uh, other poisonous species of uh, in the carrot family, umbilifus. Um, but uh, I know that uh, in this area the poisonous uh, look-alikes don't actually, um, uh, we don't actually find them. So Here's uh, one of uh, many uh, currants that we have in the garden and it's uh, in, in full, full flower. I'm not sure, it's a wild, uh, a wild species of currant. Um, and these are just delicious at this stage. They, they re you can really taste the sweetness when you... Uh, um, mm. Nectar. Fantastic, yeah. And a nice decoration also gives a, 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 little, uh, a little sweetness to the salad. So we can pick a few of these. So this is a gooseberry in full flower. They're quite pretty, actually. And they're also quite, uh, quite sweet tasting. At this time when uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of nectar in the flowers. Then we've got uh, rowan. This is a wild rowan that's still growing in the garden. Um, recognize the leaves. And the leaves uh, actually have a, uh, they actually taste of almonds at this time. You can even make almond cakes with, uh, with rowan leaves. Delicious. Down here we have uh, Alcamila, ladies mantle in English. You can see this little droplet in the, after, after rain. And these can be used, the young leaves can be used in, uh, in these mixed salads. Fairly neutral, uh, a neutral taste, and they're quite uh, decorative as well. One year we decorated the salad with uh, with the droplets intact. Another wild plant in the garden. This is a, a dock, a big uh, problem species in normal agriculture, but uh, we can use these uh, these young shoots as a as a um, as a vegetable. It's a plant called head garlic, Aliaria. It's actually related to the uh, the brassicas. And there's one in uh, coming out into flower. And they're rather beautiful flowers, which are nice to decorate these uh, spring salads with. Um, so it's related to the, the cabbage family, but uh, um, actually tastes a bit like uh, garlic. And the flowers are, are rather delicious. So we'll have a few of these, particularly the top shoots, are rather good at this time of year. You can also cook with them. There's three or four different species of Aurelia. Aurelia's in the ginseng family. This is a one from California, Aurelia californica. That also has these uh, young shoots which can be used a bit like uh, Udo that we saw. It's not quite such a big plant, um, but it uh, can be used in the same way. Here we've got uh, raspberry, sort of wild raspberry in the garden. Delicious uh, small berries. Most of the uh, rubus species uh, related to raspberry, you can use the young shoots in the springtime, again in mixed salads and uh, yeah, used traditionally around the world wherever um, raspberries uh, grew wild. Sweet Sicily, a big invasive species here in Norway, it can uh, form big colonies, um, has these uh, very typical white blotches on the leaves. It's a plant which uh, has a, uh, a nice uh, anise um, mm -hmm. licorice type uh, taste of the spring leaves and particularly the young seeds when they're still green are delicious. So we can uh, have a little bit of that. Another currant which is in full flower at the moment. Uh, this is Rebe's sang Sanguineum. They're rather pretty, aren't they? So I think we'll have a few of those in the salad to decorate. 
I say. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, carry on up the hill through the jungle. This is actually a Angelica sylvestris or wood Angelica, which is uh, one of two species we have here in Norway growing in the wild. This is a, a cultivar with these uh, dark, these kind of purplish leaves called uh, Vicar's Mead. So it's a nice edimental or edible ornamental. Here it's just a, a wild species called um, Viola dubiana, rather large flowers. This is a, a large chives. It's called uh, Middleman for some reason, I don't know, uh, but it's a, a rather one of the largest uh, varieties of chives that I've uh, come across. And of course, uh, well, chives is one of the most commonly grown alliums or onions mm -hmm. around the world. And the only actual species, species that you can find in the wild, both in uh, North America, in Asia, and also in, uh, in Europe. Here we've got um, Leucanthemum vulgare, or ox eye daisy. And, and this is actually a very, a very tasty uh, spring vegetable, mm -hmm. or a spring yes. vegetable, and also spring. It tastes a bit like aster. I don't know, it's uh, difficult to describe. What do you think? Can you describe that taste? It's kind of a bit uh, aromatic. And it's, it's a bit of... round. Mm. 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 Mild. It's mild, but mm -hmm. uh, has a, uh, a special taste as well. So that we can use uh, quite a bit of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oops, sorry. Um, nutty? A little nutty taste? Slightly nutty, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, perhaps. And then on, on the left hand side here, we have another one of my favourite onions. This is. Uh, Looks a bit like a, a young um, leek, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, actually um, an onion uh, called uh, Rockenbolle, Allium scorodobrasum, um, which is uh, one of the onions which we know the Vikings uh, cultivated in, uh, in Scandinavia. Um, and it's uh, perennial, it kind of divides itself, and you can find a nice little clump like this. Mm -hmm. And actually, in, in this climate, it uh, it actually produces more than leeks do. Oh. Yeah. And it's perennial. It comes back year after year. You do nothing. Great. Yeah. yeah. So it's much less work and uh, produces these tasty uh, spring. Um, well, you can also use them in the autumn. Oh, this is a, one of the last year's uh, it's a ragged jack kale. Um, and uh, this is just about coming into, into flower. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, can use it as a kind of a broccoli in the in mm -hmm. the salad. Take the side side leaves. It will it will re-sprout and, and tastes flower. Tastes like kale, a little salty. Or? Sorry. Is it tastes like kale? Or? Yeah, it tastes like kale. Yeah, it's a salty. It's a kind of an old old variety of kale, mm -hmm. um, which goes back uh, 100, 200 years. So we know that that has been that variety has been around for that length mm -hmm. of time. Behind me here we have a um, garlic, which was uh, planted in the in the autumn. Yeah. Just take a take a leaf, put mm -hmm. it in the salad. But this is a a, um, a sorrel, um, a red-leaved sorrel, which I call wine sorrel, because it has the same colour as uh, um, as red wine. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's actually an, a subspecies of uh, sorrel, Rumex acetosa subspecies vinealis. Vinealis mm -hmm. means wine. And next to that, we've got another sorrel. This is Rumex scutatus. Just one of the 80 plants in my book. Very nice uh, sour taste. Mm -hmm. Totally perennial. This one, this plant here is probably 20 years old. Just comes back year after year and gives these uh, delicious uh, uh, spring shoots. Well, again, you can use it most of the summer. If you cut it regularly. Over here, this is a, a hogweed. Kind of a bit of a weed in this, uh, this row here of uh, Patience Dock. Another plant in the Rumex family related to the those last two, the Rumex scutatus and acetosa, and it has uh, has much milder taste to the leaves. It's not so sour as these other ones. Um, so people that don't like sour, they they, they like this one particularly. Mm -hmm. So you can use quite a lot of this. Here we actually have a row of um, caraway. It's mostly used for the seeds. Probably the, the most well, it is it is the most uh, used uh, spice in Norway through the ages. It's a plant which grows right the way through Scandinavia, um, even in the far north, so it's totally hardy. Mm -hmm. It's a biennial, grows from, from Norway to the Himalayas, it's wild uh, distribution. And throughout its range, we, people use the, the young leaves as a vegetable, both uh, 
in soups but also in salads. So we can have a little bit of that. This is parsley which I sowed in the autumn. Parsley shoots could also be used so we just put a little bit of that up in the salad. It's a Siberian nodding onion. Allium nutans, very broad leaves like this. Very tasty, extremely hardy. And uh, this is a selection I've made myself of, uh, from seed of a broader, um, broader leaved variant. Um, just down at your feet here, we have one of many dandelions I grow in the garden here, uh, deliberately. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a red-leaved dandelion, Taraxacum rubifolium. It has these, these, these dark leaves. That one wasn't that dark, but they're, um, they can, they're, they're, they're very dark early in the spring and they become greener as the, the season develops. Mm -hmm. So they're very nice in very early spring um, in salads to add a bit of a splash of colour. Do they taste different? Uh, taste is very, very, pretty similar to, to other ones. Here we have a very common weed around the world, often called white man's or Englishman's footprint. This is uh, greater plantain, Plantago mayor, which uh, um, and the young leaves of this have very, very tasty, uh, kind of nutty taste to them. Let's uh, just use the young leaves because they get a bit uh, coarse after a while. And further up we have some red-leaved Dandelion. This is actually a spring onion that I planted last year that's overwintered. Called Ishikura, I think it is. There's another one here called Ramrod. So they're good. So this is kind of spring onions. This here is, um, oh, oh, in the US, it's, they're called walking onions. You can more or less at this time of year use the whole plant and, and part of the bulb as well. Um, this is actually called an, an Amish top set onion. Mm. So they, they produce uh, like Egyptian onions. They produce these uh, top sets, um, these onions on top, doesn't produce seed, um, and uh, which um, the top sets can also be used. So it's a plant you can use pretty well all through the season. So this was a, a variety which was grown by the Amish people in the US. This is Viola lutea, and it has yellow flowers a bit later in the, later in the season. But you can also use the leaves. And over here is another variety of Angelica sylvestris, or wood and angelica not the red one this is just a green leaf one this is uh, chickweed and this you can be you can use uh, in the springtime uh, both in salads but also to make soups and uh, you might as well use it it's there always will be there and next to it is uh, actually a japanese perennial vegetable called mitsuba um, cryptotania japonica this is the green um, a variety of Cryptotonia japonica, which is very commonly used and found you find in all the supermarkets in Japan in the springtime. It's sometimes called Japanese parsley. It doesn't really taste of parsley, it has, it has its own taste, but it's in the carrot family like uh, parsley is. This area here, I have uh, six different varieties of Russian sorrel, which are found in a, in a vegetable catalogue in Estonia two years ago. So I bought all the packets and I'm just trialling to see what the difference are, differences are between the different uh, varieties of Russian sorrel. Very popular vegetable in, in Russia. The Sami people, the Laplanders in Norway, they, this is a very important vegetable for them. Harvested in the springtime and fermented. You can also use the young flowers. So they're just about coming into flower, you see. On the ledge here we have a, a beautiful spring flower which is also edible. It's, uh, it's called Alpine Rockcress, Arabis uh, alpina. It's again in the, uh, the cabbage family. And uh, you know, the, the young flowers are both, both tasty and they're also um, uh, uh, nice to have as decoration on your salad in the springtime. Totally perennial, totally hardy, perfect. This is another Plantago plantain species. Plantago caucasica from the Caucasus.